On Sunday, Tunisia extradited the last prime minister to serve under Muammar Gaddafi back to Libya. And now human rights groups say Baghdadi al Mahmoudi faces a very real risk of being tortured. Well, let's discuss this with Press TV correspondent Lizzie Phelan. She's actually joining us live now from Nicaragua. Uh, Lizzie, Amnesty International condemned the decision of the Tunisian authorities, saying Mahmoudi faces torture, an unfair trial, and possibly extrajudicial execution. And some reports suggest he's already suffered a beating in a Libyan jail. But in spite of all of this, it is still right that he should face justice, isn't it? Well, look, I mean, there, if there are legitimate charges for uh, Baghdadi al Mahmoudi to answer to, it has to, of course, happen in an environment whereby he can face a fair trial, which there, there is nothing resembling that that can happen in Libya at any time in the near future, because there is no such thing as institutions in Libya anymore. There is indeed no such thing as government. Um, but the, it's very worrying, the ability by the right-wing Islamist faction, Nazi in Tunisia, uh, that they were able to surpass the Tunisian constitution. Um, and we can only hope as well that their Muslim Brotherhood counterparts now in power in Egypt do not strike a deal also with the MTC, uh, with some of their allies in the MTC to extradite many of the, there's many thousands of Libyans, including former officials, living there, because to do so would be to uh, subject those Libyans almost certainly to a fate of torture, like it looks has happened to the former prime minister, and as well has happened to Dr. Abu Zed uh, Dorda, the former permanent representative to the United Nations, and many other thousands uh, of Libyans. And as Amnesty have said, also perhaps the face of murder. But we must also ask what are Nader's interests in cooperating with the MTC, which is clearly practicing systematic abuses. And this is an interesting uh, question, because in cooperating with the MTC, which is only leading to the greater destabilization and fragmentation of Libya, as we are seeing unfolding every day, is essentially to serve the West interests who are very keen to see perpetual instability in Libya and in the wider region so that like in Iraq, the NATO's corporate elites can win contracts uh, to supposedly pick up the pieces, which of course they will never do because A, they are not in a position to pick up the pieces. It's only a Libya where, where, whose sovereignty is respected that can do that. And it's neither in their interest to pick up the pieces because otherwise they won't make any money out of pretending to pick up the pieces. And it's also in the West interest that important members of the Jamahiriya government, like the former Prime, Prime Minister uh, and Dr. Abu Zedoza, who is facing a sham trial in a kangaroo court currently in Libya, remain subjugated because amongst those members and those hundreds of thousands of Libyans who have now fled the country, many of whom are in neighboring uh, Egypt and Tunisia, amongst them are the people who know how to build a stable Lib Libya with strong and well-functioning institutions necessary for society to function. But the West doesn't want strong institutions or a well-functioning well society in Libya. It wants eternal anarchy and chaos like that which we are seeing today. Well, is there not hope? Is there not hope that we could see that? I mean, after all, it, they're due to hold their first direct elections for Congress that will be tasked with overseeing the government, uh, over the elections, drafting a constitution. I mean, is that not, though, a sign that democratic change could be underway in Libya, briefly? Uh, perhaps on the face of it, but if you look, if you, if you look at actually what is happening on the ground, uh, there is, continues to be a systematic persecution, imprisonment, and torture of anybody who doesn't agree with the with the different militias running different parts of the country and the MPC, and particularly persecution of people who support uh, the, the former Jamahiriya government. So it is ridiculous to hold elections in such an environment of persecution of large sections of the population, and some estimates put the refugee population of Libyans who have fled the country at up to two million. We're talking about almost one third of the population. The poor former population of Libya was six million. So how are those Libyans going to participate in the future building of their country? No, the only way that real dem uh, democracy uh, and, and uh, you know, genuine elections can take place is once the MTC and, and, of course, the NATO powers are continuing to interfere and support one side against the other. Once that stops and the persecution of certain sections of Lib Libyan society stops so that all Libyans, all Libyans can participate in the future of their country. Uh, I, I know you're talking uh, a lot from experience because you spent a lot of time there in Libya. Just briefly and finally, the revolution then, from what you're saying. Uh, 
hasn't been a success, but there are many saying it was a necessary move to get rid of uh, Colonel Gaddafi and, and the future is brighter. But what's your view? What, was the revolution worth it after all of that? Well, I mean, I would call it an insurgency that overthrew a, a, a legitimate and, and sovereign government under international law. And uh, obviously, a revolution implies progress. And uh, let's look at what the concrete results of the insurgency in Libya have been. The concrete results have been hundreds of thousands of dead, uh, continuing fighting every day. There's reports of, of uh, certain militias bombing parts of, of Libya. The persecution of the large um, migrant population from sub-Saharan Africa, black skin and black skin Libyans. The complete destruction of all institutions necessary for society to function. Uh, the, the complete destruction, destruction of normal functioning daily life. People can't go to school, people normally, university normally, people, tens of thousands of people are in prison. So if this is uh, the, the result, and I know there have been many, many reports of, of Libyans, including in the mainstream media, even some who supported the insurgency against the former Libyan government, who are now lamenting the loss of, of the former system and which, in, under which they live in a country where, which has achieved the highest standard of living in Africa, a high level of development, and we're really doing very well on all social indicators. Now all of those achievements have been reversed. Press TV correspondent Lizzie Phelan, thanks very much indeed uh, for that live there in Nicaragua. Thank you.